helpful, okay? All right. All right. All set. Okay, so then continuing, so so we should check carefully through all this in case Lauren added anything else that we might not want. Okay, so essentially for part B here, Craig, this is sort of outlining the, the, the method in a nutshell. So once you pass the threshold, you've won a seat, right? Um, so that candidate surplus then gets distributed according to transfer value. And we can again specify the Wigan method here if you feel that needs to be clarified for how to define transfer value. And then part three here is eliminating weakest candidates once you don't have anybody passing the threshold. And then four just says, keep going until you fill everything. Okay, and she actually has a clause here so that once you get down so that the number of continuing candidates equals the number of seats to be filled, you're done and you just elect all of them. So do we want to keep that? So essentially, that means even if only a person just got one vote, but they survived to the end, you're elected. That, that would happen that, under RCB anyway, that now, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So that's what I wish now. So that's just sort of consistent with with current method then. Yeah, I mean, I would simply remove it because it's unnecessary, right? Rank choice voting will already do that. And less <laughs> language in law equals better language in law. Yeah, yeah. I think it's nice to have there just to assert that that is, is the way it will work. So that's okay. that's helpful to me. I, I wasn't quite sure what we were allowed to do in that case. So I, I actually kind of find that helpful. I guess it would also be nice just in case we have to do like a hand recount or use Excel at some horrid point in the future. And we can be like, oh, hey, look at that. We're down to the same number of candidates as spots left. No more work. Yeah, and that's true. That's true. So it's also explicitly telling us you don't have to go through the rounds exhaustively, you know, that you can just sort of stop at that point. Okay, so does all this language seem correct? Any concerns with this part B? Seems fine. All right, so move on to part C. Okay, so this just says, we'll figure out the tiebreakers. And I think a lot of these different softwares that we have available offer different options that you just have to choose a method available you know, among available methods. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I think the only thing uh, this might be covered already is whatever method it is has to be reproducible, at least as far as possible, right? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, you don't want something random. Um, yeah, because otherwise you could rerun the election and the vote totals could be the same, but you could end up with different winners. Yeah. Although the way that's often done is you record what the outcome was of like a coin flip and then you just reuse that. Ah, uh, okay. That, that's what the second sentence says, you know. Mm -hmm. Must be recorded and reused. Yeah, so there's different methods, yeah. like some methods randomly order candidates and the tiebreaker is sort of where you come in the order, whoever's listed first wins the tie. And, you know, there's, there's all kinds of different things, but as long as you record it at the outset, then it's all reproducible. Um, Although we can, if you like the word reproducible, we can be, uh, so the results of any tie-breaking events, well, I mean, it says must be recorded and reused in the event of a recount. So that's yeah, I think that covers it. That's fine. Yeah. I don't think we want reproducible because if it's, if we end up with a random thing, it may not be reproducible. But if it's recorded. And right. Then we can reuse it. Yeah. I think it's fine the way it is. Oh, I see what you're saying, Peggy. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like we could, if we said it has to be reproducible, that would mean a coin flip couldn't be used. Right. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. 
All right, so, so then I want to look carefully at D to make sure, because we made some changes. Actually, hey, Tanya, um, Andy has a comment about ties. Um, is that, Andy, is that in case of just, is that just for state elections? Or uh, I thought Amherst had a... Well, we talked to Lauren about this. Yeah, so I forget what town of uh, tie, ties break down to, but... Well, she said, so long as we build it into our special act, we can, <clears throat> right? Because there's sort of a difference in plurality between ties where there's sort of no means of tie breaking besides coin flips and something like ranked choice where you can go back and say, well, who had more votes in a previous round or something? Um, but yeah, we talked about this with Lauren and she said, so long as it's kind of baked into our special act, we can have this. That's why the tie breaking language is there. So ah, I see. Can, um, essentially get special permission to do, do our own tie breaking and not have to rerun the election. Uh, okay, and it doesn't seem like Lauren had any comment on the tie breaking stuff. So that probably works. I just don't know if we're, if the state calls for a, uh, a special election, but we have basically a tiebreaking provision that doesn't identify what the tiebreaker is if we're still overriding it. Mm -hmm. um, but since Lauren didn't put any comments on it, I'm assuming this is good. Yeah, well, she wrote this whole tiebreaking <clears throat> language here. So this is yeah. all hers, so. Oh, that's so great, yeah, that works then. We didn't have anything, we just asked her, like, what do we do about tiebreaking? And she, she wrote that up for us. So. Is this another instance in which we, we change it to say the, the town clerk uh, subject to review by board of registrars will establish? Yes. It's already be there. Oh, so you mean the second time that the board appears? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I was looking because the the screen print is so small. I was looking at my word version instead of what was on the screen here. Um, but that's a good point. So maybe amended from time to time. Should I, I guess maybe the town clerk by themselves shouldn't be able to amend it. Is that something that's appropriate to say the board so that's kind of overseen? Maybe, maybe you could just cut the second by the board. So just so it reads, the method for tiebreaking may be amended from time to time, but shall not be amended during the course of an election, which that's implies- a good solution. That, yeah. Pick that up. Yeah. So I think that's sort of, I mean, it says the town clerk reviewed by the board will establish the method. So I think that sort of implied that if you make a change, that's how the change would also happen. What's the course of an election mean? You can't sort of midstream like- Well, I understand what we're trying for it to mean, but like- does that specifically mean, like, what's the course? Is it election day? Is it two weeks before election day? Is it three weeks? That's what I want to know. I think once voting has begun, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So you could, like, you, and it would be okay for the the town clerk to change the tie-breaking method up to the minute before voting occurs. Well, yeah. you know, you don't hear results until the election closes, until the polls close, and you start tabulating. Okay. I don't uh, think there's anything technically wrong with that. I think it, it would cause some pretty big suspicious looks. <laughs> yeah, but it could also be necessitated like if there's some kind of last minute software update and like some little minor thing gets changed or like. So that won't happen because, I... but <laughs> yeah, that won't happen. But I will no. say this is what my concern was uh, what if, you know, I mean, this would be a self-imposed problem, obviously, if it says the town clerk subject to review, right? But like the software needs to be set up and good to go like weeks before the election. Mm -hmm. If they change the voting method or if they change the tie-breaking method, then they actually have to go change the configuration on the software. That's true. And then there won't, there won't be time to test it. You have to have Everything so I'm not saying that this doesn't work or that this doesn't, you know, isn't a good solution. Because again, if the town clerk decided, if Susan decided like, oh, it's five minutes before election, I'm going to change the tiebreaker to be arm wrestling, you know, <laughs> uh, that would be a self-imposed problem, obviously. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, no, it's definitely bound by the uh, programming. Once the programming's done, you're locked in. So for hmm. D, let me see, I had a comment, which is this seems to be wrong, right? I thought last uh, meeting we had uh, determined that if there was an overvote, we were going to discard the rest of them. That's exactly what we decided. Okay. It's, wrong, it's wrong in our report as well, so. Someone in skip ranking or repeat. Which point should be highest continuation? This is an overvote. Um, so in place of, in this highlighted part, in place of the highest continuing ranking must be determined via predetermined rule. You just want to write in. The okay. overvote and any further rankings are discarded. Further is not the right word, but. Subsequent. Subsequent, there you go. I mean, in fact, this isn't entirely wrong because the predetermined rule could just be that the overvote candidates and everybody below is discarded. That is true, yeah. But, the, but it, this does imply that we would be choosing between those two candidates, and I don't think we want to imply that. All right. So, so say again what what let, let's. I, I think it'd be good to actually just specify what we think this should be and put it in. Yeah. So can um, Peggy or someone what what's the, the wording that that seems um, here to clarify this. I think in the case of an overvote involving two or more continuing candidates, the overvote candidates and any can candidates with subsequent rankings will be discarded. Or with lower rankings, perhaps, will be discarded. Something like that, does that work? Yeah. yeah, I like that we're nailing that down. I think that's the right choice. Like, to, to some extent, we want to keep it open for them to, you know, change things as needed. But on the other hand, like, if it's too finicky, persnickety, and changeable, then people are going to lose faith if, you know, people are changing it all the time. Let's see, Andy suggests the language, the ballot shall be concluded. Concluded or exhausted? I mean, before, below, it's just, essentially it's making the ballot, well. But well, it's not exhausted before, because you're talking about yeah, this is an error on the ballot. Before we do anything. Yeah. So I'm not sure that means the ballot shall be concluded. I mean, I see what he's saying, like the ballot is concluded as in like, that's the end of the rankings, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think in we terms of just ease of understanding, it's just easier to say that they're discarded. Yeah, we'd have to define what it means to be concluded if we want oh, yeah. to, because it's not clear, just okay. as is. So we're, we're happy with this, this language. And again, the, you know, they're, they're likely to have you know talk to Lauren again and do some further tweaking before it actually gets submitted um, just to optimize the chances of getting it through. Could we say considered invalid or mm, but that's going to suggest that the ballot is considered invalid. Well no because it specifically says the overvote candidates and all subsequent ranked candidates will be considered invalid but that might not be the right word it's a yeah. it's a hard one i'm not sure will be disregarded Yeah i like that Disregarded is good I'm good with that Yeah i like that That's good Mhm mm like that it's good All right So anything else on part D that we needed to fix here And that's essentially all of the substantive stuff. The rest is just some legalese that Lauren put. Um, um, one question about Andy's comment at 250. Did we include that or do we understand what he's saying there? 250? 
Why not write in the earlier round method? Yeah, did we? Oh, oh, oh with the tie breaking. Um, so that's up to us if we want to, you know, so some details we're deciding we really want baked in and other details we're like, eh, we're willing to leave it up to them to debate. I'd say we leave that particular one just up to them simply because uh, some of the software may include the earlier round determination, but some may not. And honestly, people get a little weird about tiebreakers. Like people have been doing coin flips for a long time and they may legit decide like, no, even though it makes more sense, we want a coin flip. <laughs> like, and hey, okay, sure. Actually, what we've done in the past is done, it's basically if there's a tie, there's a failure to elect. Oh yeah? Yep. That's, isn't that the state law? You have to do it again? It is. Yeah. But we're hoping to avoid that. I know. Well, I yeah, that, that's what Andy was saying uh, with the special runoff um, election. Yeah. That I, I could see if it gets down to the nitty gritty in, you know, <coughs> if there truly is like you're down to the last two candidates, the last seat, and you have no way of distinguishing them and you don't want a coin flip, you might have to run another election if you decide that's right. But you don't want to have to run a whole nother election just because in round two, you have a tie like between two candidates to eliminate or something. Like I think we, we essentially want to have enough tiebreakers in place. You can have a good shot at completing the election. If we want to include language here, I would vote for the, um, the previous round check that we talk about. Um, I think that would require, you know, some decent text behind it to explain how that works. I vote that we leave it as is. I agree. I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. So any other <laughs> last things here before we move on to the report? So we've, we've made a bunch of updates here. Um, so the biggest changes are we changed the threshold definition just to the explanation of what it is, but got rid of a formula. Um, we specified Wiggum. And then we made some of these, um, the, the change to the overvote. I think those are kind of the big, big ones here we made. Um, so any, any last concerns with any, any of these changes here? You know, just to add to what we were last talking about, uh, it's fine leaving the language like that. We should make it clear that they can't just keep using the same, like they can't, when we say, you know, they have to choose a tie-breaking method, that's fine, but they have to understand that um, we're, we, they actually need to pick a method to break ties because of how ranked choice voting works. And we do not want to have a runoff elect, you know, a, a special election every, like you said, if there's a tie in a round. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I just want to make sure that we have, uh, when we may already have something in the either recommendations or otherwise that makes that clear. So they, you know, so they understand that they can't just default to the way it was. Right. Because they may just read that and, you know, absent whatever is in our report, they may say, like, oh, we'll just do it the way we currently do it, you know, without thinking about it. Yeah. Well, there is no current way to do it <laughs> without just holding another election. Right. They may just refer to mass law and say, like, oh, well, in the case of a tie, we just do a run. We just do a special election. OK, we'll just do that. So it sounds to me as if this this should go into our report that among the various things that uh, the town needs to do in order right. to make implementation is determine what methods going to use they're going to use for tie breaking. Right. So then we could mention the sort of previous round uh, suggestion. Yep. In the yeah. report, you mean? In the report, yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I don't think we do at this point. So that's something. Right. We need to that's right. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me because in the report, kind of our overall goal is besides just laying out the overall, you know, implementation RCV is to say, here are the specific choices you have to make. And since that's one of them, yeah, we should put that in there. Yep. All right. So what if we do just like a three minute break here now that we're kind of, we, we're through the first hour, we've gotten um, the special act stuff figured out. Let's maybe just take a three minute break and come back and we'll 
tackle the report itself and try to get through that. Okay. Oh, sure. Good. Yep. All right, so let's dive in and see how efficiently we can get this part done here. So do we have everyone back again? I'm back. Here. Yeah. Yes, he's back. I'm ready. Okay. Um, 
Um, so we finalized our special ACK language I can then copy in as our first appendix. <clears throat> so the issues that I had highlighted. Um, so I added tiebreakers in there that we should think where we might want to add that. Um, if there's any deadlines we wanted to, to list in there. And um, I don't know if anywhere we recommended some uh, post implementation assessment just to see how things are going, if that was already part of our, I remember if that was part of the appendix that John made for us or not, or the, the, the list of things from Minneapolis. Uh, And one question was, we're inconsistent. Sometimes we call it the Secretary of State, but it's actually, I think, technically Secretary of the Commonwealth. So does that matter which one we call it? Everybody says Secretary of State, but it's technically Secretary of the Commonwealth. Well, let's use Secretary of the Commonwealth then. Yeah, just stick with that. Okay, so I, I will go through and fix that. That's something easy for me to go through and just check later. So let's say, change it all to say that. For, um, so I guess this first issue is a really a question for Sue. Are there any deadlines that we should highlight in terms of when something absolutely has to be done for you to be able to run an election with the RCV? So I'll have to um, get back to you on that because um, tomorrow, because I have all that information. I actually just ran a timeline for Paul. He said mm -hmm. the town is probably going to be interested, but it mostly involves um, nomination papers when they're due back by for us to get that information onto the ballot, all of that. So I have that in my office. I will send that to you tomorrow morning. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So then that the next item is tiebreakers. So where do we want to add that in? So if we look at these sections. Um, After ballot errors and voter intent. So we have ballot errors and voter intent. Um, so we want this to be its own new section. Yeah. Because then we have the methods they have to choose between, although we have a recommendation. And then we actually, we put, we put Wiggum in the special act, right? Yes. So we should change the, uh, just some of the language in methods for ranked choice ballot to indicate that Wiggum's what we're going for, but here's why we chose it. And these are the other methods that could potentially be used sometime in the future. So again, what was what were you suggesting we change? We should just do a once over of methods and ranked choice ballots so that any language in there that indicates they have a choice about it is removed because they don't. We put it in the special act now. Oh, 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 you're just saying we. Yeah, it would be confusing if it's like, oh, here's some things you can choose between. And then it's like, no, no, you can't. <laughs> the law says you cannot. Right. Well, except the law hasn't been passed. Oh, well, yeah. But well, we can put something like, uh, you know, we recommend Wigan be used as is currently indicated in the special app language or something. Right. Like yeah, we don't we don't need to point out to them that they can change things if they want to, because we don't want them to. <laughs> okay, so then we'll need to add a new section on tiebreakers. I'll go through later and update all these numbers. Okay, so the tiebreakers will be a new section. Um, so yeah, so let's maybe just go through and you can give me your, your comments. So for the executive summary, uh, what comments did people have? Um. Beginning at the top of page three, that paragraph. I think uh, before the word security, we need the word and.
Where are you suggesting putting it in, Peggy? Between ballot design and security protocols. Right here, I have the. Tanya and everyone, um, it says if the town determines that implementation, the very next paragraph, mm -hmm. uh, is not possible mm. due to delays, the town should seek a special act to permit the continued use of plurality. So we did find out today. Um, did you get the email from Paul? Mm -hmm. um, Lauren, so we don't need to actually get a special act because it would just automatically revert to state law in running the election. Okay. Uh, so That's great. It all so, um, and uh, the town would, by default, run elections according to state law, just something like that. like that looks good and i don't know if i'd say um delays associated with the pandemic because it could be other delays that happen as well like we have no idea how long it takes for the legislature to approve it for example or for our town council to approve it so if the like if they're going as fast as they can and it's not approved by the state i don't think there's like that's not breaking with what the charter decided. Uh, and I would not put delays as a generalized term in there because, right. I mean, just look at Maine, right? They were like, oh yeah, you all voted to implement ranked choice voting, but for reasons we can't do that for 10 years. You know, like, uh, no. <laughs> okay with my my updated version did you want to put in something that says they shouldn't delay too long or just to specify that i mean it's after it's up to them after all we're recommending they proceed but if they can't this is what would happen you know i wouldn't put it in at all so you just entirely erase like if, if you know they're I, I just remove that whole thing. You know, if they have a really substantial reason why it can't be implemented by 2021 elections, they'll work it out, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't need to put text in our recommendations that say, oh, if you can't get done in time, don't worry about it, you know? Because it's really not up to us. Yep, it's true. Okay. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Under in the next paragraph, actually, I have a bunch of small copy edits I can send you separately. They're not worth going into. Yes, if it's just minor things, that's probably yeah. the best thing to do is mark them up, maybe highlight them to make sure I can. Yeah, I, I just couldn't mm -hmm. type them in this version because there's already so many changes that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kind of messy. Something yeah. You want to accept all changes and then make your changes. Yeah, I just right. want to try to keep it clear where I'd been making changes so yes, i got yes a little out of hand <laughs> so so the, the paragraph below the calculation of voters rank preferences um the part about let's see Wait, where are without we? specialty software in under the second paragraph under technical mm -hmm. i just um let me see without specialty software in case of hand recounts i wasn't sure what the specialty software part meant. I just thought it was by hand in case of a recount as mandated by the state. That's true. We, we can potentially use software. We just need to hand compile. So we may just want to generalize just it. Make it generalized. Yeah. Yeah. And so maybe we just want to move the recount so we can talk about the software. We describe the options, offer a recommendation. Um, and 
and then they just point out a a, re, a process for recount must be specified or determined or I don't know if this goes under technical. I don't know. Do you think we even need to mention recounts? I don't think we do. Here. We're, we're going on the assumption that a hand recount means that the um, the cast vote record has to be created again. Manually. But, yeah. but once it is, we can still run it through the software to actually run the election. Right. Mm -hmm. That sounded so, like what Lauren said we could do, which right. So in that case, I don't think we need to talk about recounts here. Okay. So I had a, um, can we move on to the next comment? Mm -hmm. we? Oh, um, so the second paragraph under policy consideration. So I didn't, um, I'm confused by that sentence. A method that advantages greater accuracy is reflecting voters' preferences, thereby achieving the policy goals of RCV presents challenges. Are you, is this a specific but unnamed reference to the Meeks method? I'm not, I just wasn't clear what that sentence was trying to say. Let me, let me read it again. Yeah, that's, that's essentially a reference to Meeks. So the, as the, the method gets more complicated in reflecting voter preferences, it becomes uh, less transparent and more difficult to use in hand recounts. So that's true in terms of Meeks, but I don't believe that's accurate as a general rule. I think we could just, I was just gonna suggest we cut that sentence. Yeah, I would say so too. I think that the section in which you describe all of those methods, John, is very clear. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be, and we're so clear on our recommendation that we don't have to muddy the waters. Um, Is that okay, John? We, sure. Yeah. Should we though specify here? Maybe. I mean, we we say we offer recommendations, but the special act actually has a specific thing baked in. So do we want to mention that here, sort of at this very top of the document, just to really draw attention to the fact that something has been baked in? I would say instead of this report describes the options and offers recommendations, I would say, you know, the special act uh, uh, requires the use of the Wiggum method. Yeah, that I don't. I think we should say something like, "We we describe the options and recommend Wiggum, which we have written into the special act, which has been written into the special act." Yeah, I was going to continue yeah. and do that, except backwards. <laughs> yeah. I think the that special that's act. The special that's act reflects good. our recommendation. Yes. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's Can good. Say that again. The special <laughs> act reflects our recommendation. That. <laughs> um, so do we want to keep any of this other sentence? No. No. Okay. I, I think for number three down below, we can um, probably cut the the recommendation just to say, I don't think we need to deal with the onerous part, but just 
say to ensure election security, the computer must uh, meet the criteria. Let's make it Let's do that. Yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, number seven for recommendation, charge the town clerk with drafting such a program and timeline for consideration and approval. I, I have a feeling the voter outreach and education is going to be a several months. <laughs> so that needs to get built in. This is going to fly. A question for Sue. A lot of these say, you know, we're going to ch charge the town clerk and then yeah. check by town manager, but how does this actually work? What's the right, right, like people to be doing which? Well, actually, um, we do have a communications team. So, um, I think the town manager is going to have to be brought into it uh, just to decide who's going to be tackling what. You know what I mean? Because we've got an internet specialist. We have, you know, we have a lot of different parts of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. I think you know the town clerk ultimately is in charge of running the election. Maybe it is. Maybe this is correct to leave it so that the town clerk will just outsource all the different areas that are mm -hmm. needed. Okay, so you're, you're okay with this as, as it's written that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, and considering for the town manager, there it is. Yeah, it could also be the town manager. It's right there. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. All right, so is the part eight here updated with our new? Do you mean the overvote section? Yeah, here we go. Discard. Okay, yeah, that hasn't been updated, right? So this is still right. our old version. Yeah, that's, that's incorrect as written. And... So it was what we decided was only in the case of skipped votes that we would promote, not in the case of overvotes. Right. Okay. And I mean, that's also written into the act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of things that are written into the act. That's okay. Okay. We just need to go through and make sure that we're consistent <laughs> now that we've like, you know, changed our mind on a couple of things to make sure we mm -hmm. have it all not confusing. Um, I think we can actually get rid of the undervotes since there's, I mean, there's not. There's, no, That's how it's handled now. So, here. yeah. It might be just just to keep this a little tighter. Yep. I don't. I don't. Um, I don't understand why you would remove that. I I was thinking the same thing, and one thing we have to keep in mind is most people in the town council are not that familiar with elections, so. You may have to do a little more hand holding. Say that again. I'm saying there's a lot of people in the town council don't wouldn't know half of the terms we're using and are not familiar with you know a lot of the election terminology. So I think, or just the methods or the policies. So I think leaving things in like this are good. Well, it's it's fully explained in the the whole section. I was just suggesting you true this list because it's not something special to rank choice voting so i wanted to keep kind of no, i see what you're saying what things actually would change okay i'm i'm fine with that
I would almost think you could just nail the make the whole section determine the policies to be used in assessing voter intent in regard to repeat candidates, skip votes, and duplicate votes. Because if you look at your heading for the section, it's um, we've identified the following matters as requiring your decisions. Yeah, but you, we, are you saying that we would leave out our recommendations? I don't know. In that section, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out a way to, to tighten it up a bit. But I do like the way John's laid out all the recommendations for each thing, that they need to make a choice, but we give a recommendation like for each thing. So I kind of like okay. it. All that, right. But it summarizes, here's the issue. This is what we recommend. But, you know, in the final analysis, it's up to you to actually, you know, the town council to actually make all these choices, the town clerk, the town manager. Got it. So what might actually help then for read, readability is to take recommendation, the word recommendation and what follows and put it in italics or something. So it stands out a little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think, I think it just might make it more readable. Let me make a note to myself. I can go do that. Give it a shot. Do the last sort of. Formatting. Um, I'll go through and do that just to, to help them, yeah, pop out a little bit. Okay, so then maybe we can just get rid of item 10. We seem to be just wanting to avoid that issue. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's moot. And instead of finalize a special act, we essentially want them to submit it as we have it. So we could just say, submit the special act to the general court. Um. They will need to run it by Lauren one more time though, right? I mean, now that we've made changes. Yeah, we like, can still, yeah. We don't want to imply that Lauren has seen this exactly word for word. Sure. Well, I can leave in the recommendation that they work with the town attorney and um, coordinate with the Office of Secretary of the Commonwealth. So I'll leave in those recommendations by kind of being a little more direct, just saying, get this submitted. Is that is that okay? Yeah. Let me say something like in moving. Just by where that is. All right. So then that's the end of the executive summary, which is probably the most important part of, this will probably be the most read two pages of the whole report. So we wanna make sure this is clear and has everything we want in it that people will know if they're only gonna read a minimum. Thank you, John. I think this is very well done. It's very helpful. I thought that the the set of, of recommendations at the end was my my goal there was to give them a roadmap for what they needed to do. All right, so we're ready to move on. And you can of course always I'll I'll set a time at which I will submit this tomorrow because I also need to get Sue's timeline stuff implemented in. Um, so you can still send me any kind of updates till like noon tomorrow, let's say. But if you realize there's some other things that you catch or you want changed, um, get them to me by noon tomorrow and get it, get it still fixed if, if you catch something that's, that's not quite right or a typo or something. All right, 
Section one. Any changes here? Changes to section one. I don't have any. I didn't either. Nope. Likewise. All right. So section two. And you might note I added some more formatting. I tried to imitate. So Jesse and his section had sort of done subsections. So I went through and, and tried to make that more consistent through all the sections. The, I think that's actually a helpful kind of, and people can refer specifically to the part they want to talk with us about. And I added little summaries, really brief summaries at the top. Yeah, I like that. That's, me too. Um, I, one thing, maybe you, I don't know what your idea about this is, but I noticed the font changes numerous times in this. <laughs> I assume that's, you just haven't gotten to that yet or? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll smooth all of that. Yeah, just depends. As people sent me their documents, they would, I don't know, somehow be in different fonts sometimes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so I'll, I'll make sure that's all consistent in the final. Great. Word. Yeah, and sometimes Word does crazy stuff, like they'll somehow be hidden somewhere that it thinks like a space is in a different font, and then you start typing and like it's a different font than everything else. So yep. yeah, I'll get that all fixed before the final version. Yep, all the, the line spacing and font and yeah, all of that. And like inserting the section numbers, I've been holding off on that because we just keep adding sections. Okay. Uh, so, any changes to section two? You note know, I put in um, some new, uh, some updated examples to try to kind of give the flavor of why. But I, what I, my understanding of the original motivation for the two member districts combined with ranked choice voting, um, what the, the Charter Commission originally had in mind for why that would kind of be a good combination. Don't kill me on this. Um, the thing that confuses me between the two different graphics is that for one, it's all four candidates are across the top. And for the other one, it's uh, done in a matrix. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, when I was reading and I'm like, wait a minute. And I, I had to like spend more time on this than I should have, if that makes any sense. Okay, so I change it to be consistent so that they're both yeah. the second one. Yeah, both I like the vertical like the second better. One. Yeah. yeah. Okay, easy enough.
one um, one of the changes that I made in the last round of revisions, uh, especially with regard to Wiggum and the other methods, is that I, I stopped using tabulation to really mean calculation. Mm. Uh, and I see that somewhere along in, in section, is it section two, we've, we've got um, in, in 2.3, for example, We've got transparency in how results are tabulated, and probably that ought to be calculated. Maybe we want to do a global search to make sure that we're using tabulated consistently and calculated consistently. All right, I'll make a note and I can go through and do that. I think that's that's important. That that's something that I think confused us for a while. That we were using terms interchangeably, and we should right. cut consistent. So I I will do that. Yeah, it looked like you did a good job of not using voting machines, but using tabulators when it, we were talking about tabulators, which I appreciate. Right. I mean, in your point, John, the last sentence in that section where it requires tabulation software able to compute the town's desired RCV method. Right. That's exactly what you're talking about, right? Right. So I would change voting machines right above that then. I actually am not sure I would there. I, I because I, I, I don't, I'm, at this point, which we do later talk about what voting machines means. But here we're just, I feel like we're just alerting them that whatever they're thinking about for voting machines isn't going to work. Um, and you may be right. I just, well, well they're still called tabulators, though, aren't they? They are right now. Will the will the town council, if we just start talking about tabulators without making that equivalency, will they understand what we're talking about? Voting machines are currently called tabulators. Yeah, they are. They should understand that. Yeah. They should know that. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that before I started meeting with this committee. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that's where, yeah, it's We've so the town council is a glossary. <laughs> What fractional votes were. I still don't know. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's very complicated. All right. So we should keep trying to move along. Any other concerns in this section you want to point out? Okay. So then we have. Emmer specific implementation. Quick question where you've got plurality block in italics and underline, is that a hyperlink to the appendix or is that just oh, fancy? No, this is just because just it's, it's, it's the, the markup track right? changes. Okay, yeah. but it's in italics. Okay. Yeah. Um, Nice talking to one of the uh, uh, voting expert guys, and they said that the the right the right description here of our current method is plurality block. And I googled that, and it, it does look it nails exactly what we do. So great. But v voting is italicized too. So mm, great. Right. So yeah. So once once the the change is except that it'll just look like, I just italicizing it as a term.
So here's a question on section 3.3. We have, um, we've baked in the Wiggum method for um, multi-winner elections, but we didn't bake in something for the Oliver Smith will. Uh, there's only really one flavor for the single winner. Really? Yep. I mean, because there's no transfer of there's no ac, there's no excess votes, right? Right, right. You just yeah. it might, meaning that the Wiggum method still applies for a single winner. So you saying? just don't need it because in a single winner, there if uh, there's the the method is only required when you are transferring excess votes past the threshold. Well, that's assuming that's what the method's used for. Right, but that's assuming that, um, I mean, there's lots of ways to, to do rank choice voting that are not Thank eliminating you. the last person, you know, eliminating. Right, but the way that the charter specified it, we're tied into essentially instant runoff voting for single. There's only one way to do winner. it. Yeah. Specification. Okay. Uh, can we go back up to three, two, please? Um, so it says about, um, let's see, tabulation will occur at the, at the polls or polling places, I guess. And then it says town hall for absentee ballots, but we actually do uh, absentee ballots at the polling places. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, we have the option of, uh, yeah, no, that's correct. Happens at the polls. I thought this last time it didn't. Absentee Absent happens. Polls and early voting ballots happened at the central tabulation facility. I know the state keeps throwing curveballs at us, mm -hmm. but well, absent have it, always polls. Just to say, these are three places that this can happen. Right. Right. Yes, so just exactly. remove, the, just remove the phrase for absentee ballots. Yeah. And then um, where it says, let me see. Instead, the ballots and the cast vote records produced by the tabulators, um, let's say, will be transported to a central location. I was going to say something like um, on memory, on memory cards will be transported because CVRs. Most people may not know that they're actually software files. This is our first time talking about them. Might be. Yeah, and actually, are the ballots required to be transferred to the central location? Well, they do anyway, but. Ballots should come back to the town hall, town clerk, board of registrars. Yeah, which might not be wherever, I mean, which will probably be where we have it set up, but it might not be. And yeah. that, I mean, that's not something we need to, that's yeah. not part of the clarification here. We're just really trying to clarify what's happening with the cast vote records. So yeah. So. Ready. So what I was going to, I propose is, and the memory cards with the cast vote records will be, um, that are produced by the tabulators will be transported. Something That's along fine. those lines. That's accurate. Yeah. So let's turn in the, in the technical section, do we refer to them as memory sticks? A uh, USB sticks, memory stick, a USB stick is a memory stick. So it doesn't right. really matter. Well, use the same term, Jesse, if you remember yeah, what you've got. That's what I was suggesting. Yeah. Um, sure, Just you can say USB stick. I mean, a USB stick is just a memory stick that uses a USB interface. Right. I think we should just say memory stick then. Like that? Does that work? That's fine. That works. Sure. Thank you. Um, and then, oh, I just said calculate right above that. I'm sorry, two lines down in section three, three, calculating the results for the um, multi winner contest rather than the other contests. And then you don't need for multi winner elections right after that.
Now, you're mentioning the results can be released on election night in most cases. Um, just so you know, we never release results as official anyway. It's always unofficial. Mm -hmm. Good point. So, it's, yeah. Uh, so do we want to add unofficial results? Mm -hmm. Maybe it may still be released. At least. All right. So, section four. Um, can you go back up to 3.4 for one quick question? Thanks. So, for preliminaries, um, I just thought maybe we delete the bit about keeping the ballot length and layout reasonable because I, I don't know. It just seems to me that would be a crazy reason to run primaries or preliminaries. All right. But, so we're trying to specify under what, then under what conditions would the number of candidates be considered too large that we felt we needed to justify that? Uh, it's a question. For, I think the second part has it if there's more than four candidates. Or double number of seats is what we've done in the past, but I don't. That's a Sue question. We only ran one preliminary based on the new charter. We've never run pre preliminaries before that. Right, and that was based on the number of candidates, right? Yep. Yeah. Right. So I'm just gonna. I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. Remember one ballot one year for precinct eight and there being um, something like 21 candidates for an eight, eight, eight seats. <laughs> Gotta love my precinct, yeah. All went on that ballot. They did. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, and here the 25% to be elected I understand that's a threshold based on the number of candidates, but we've never explained that. So maybe we just change that to be number needed to be elected or just give it to the 25%, if that makes sense. Wait, threshold? If you, You're talking about the graphic. The yeah. graphic, yeah, right where your cursor is. Jesse, do you have so, the ability to change that or is this a, a already pre-cooked graphic? Oh, it's pre-cooked, but I can just change it. Okay, just change that. Yeah, my point is just that we have never explained our our threshold uh, formula isn't until the next page. And sure. So, so I have what change that to just the word threshold. I'll just change. Uh, you know, I'll instead of twenty five percent, I'll just put a number sign. Yeah, number needed to be elected. I like your graphic, by the way. Uh, it's not mine. I stole it. I like <laughs> your your theft. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So I had some wording changes in that. Um, yeah, the paragraph above. Did you do Did times. you want to go first? <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I thought that um, where it says the key process in multi-winner RCV is Amherst reduced for local elections. I want to switch the order. Um, I want to say the transferring of surplus votes um, before we talk about the elimination of votes, eliminating candidates, because that is the order that we're going to do it. Right, we're going to likely be trans. I mean, if there are surplus votes, we transfer those before we eliminate candidates. Only Correct. If met threshold. Yeah, yeah. Nobody I mean, there are, but there aren't surplus votes if you haven't met the threshold. So, so it, but, could, it could happen in either order. It just depends how. That's it, true, but the graphic that we have mm -hmm. has surplus votes. So then my next sentence was going to be, I think we should explain, we should give, talk about the graphic and say something like, for example, in the graphic below, the first step would be to redistribute the eight surplus votes of candidate A to other candidates. Like, I, I think having the graphic is great, but I think that we need to ex describe what that means. My concern with flipping the order is that the description of surplus runs so long 
that then putting the very short and the term eliminated candidates will be a little confusing. That's why I ordered it the way I did. Yeah, I figured that, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I don't care that much about that particular point. I just... Let's maybe insert. So then what was the, the sentence you wanted to insert? Oh, I wanted to say something like, uh, this may need rewording. Um, for example, in the graphic below the first, or the, uh, yeah, in the graphic below, the first step would be to redistribute the eight surplus votes of candidate A to other candidates. Depending on the results of that distribution, the next step might be to eliminate the candidate with the fewest votes and re redistribute their votes. Mm. I can, if you'd like, I can't, maybe I can. Um. Tanya, I just emailed you a update, uh, updated example. Ah, super. Now, I'll get that pasted in. There you go, super, okay. So I thought I just put that uh, in the Q&A, but I don't know if it actually made it to anybody besides Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not seeing. All right, I asked it to get everybody, but hey, what can I say? <laughs> It's in the answered. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's in answered, right. Thank you, John. Answered. I'm not seeing that button. If you go to Q&A, you should be able to see the answers in the second tab. Peggy, you may not be able to grab it. Peggy, instead of um, oh, no, there's just a single steps, page. do we want to refer to rounds? Oh, you're right. We do want to say rounds. Absolutely. Uh, instead of step, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the first round, we would. Or in round one, or... I would then take that last sentence right where your cursor is. This redistribution is necessary and put it below the graphic. And then you can, it leads right into the next paragraph. You can say it's necessary. However, it turns out to be complicated. Is that that's what we're trying to do?
And he's pointing out that the redistributed votes might also be enough to push another candidate over the threshold. Yeah, but I think Tanya's sentence acknowledges that. Yeah, I don't think we have to change it. I was just pointing it out. Yeah. Andy also pointed out that digital storage device might be better than memory stick. I don't know. They're the same thing. <laughs> yes. We just need to get, get this thing done. So I don't want to wordsmith too much. If okay. Clear, then we need to keep moving. So we're at four now. And we're only on page 13 of 51. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'd say if you have any small changes that you don't think the group need to discuss, send those to me in a, a marked up document. Um, so let's focus on, you know, like this was a, a substantial change, right? That we, we wanted to make sure that things were really clarified um, that we can do together. So if it's just minor things, just send those to me in a marked up document. Okay. So I don't know if anyone else printed this out, but the threshold formula, maybe because of the brackets did not print, it just went vertical down the page. Huh? So I don't know if it's, if, um, I don't know if we're sending out the Word document, but I printed this out and the threshold to win formula did not print. It um, just put a whole lot of graphics down the page. <laughs> I was so, going to it as a PDF so things couldn't be yeah. Okay, so just heads up on that one. Yeah. Okay, and then this is hopefully all pretty well baked in language. It's been, oh, we've already been over this a couple times. Yes. We just maybe wanted to say in our recommendations, refer to the fact that we um, specify it in the special act. That, just to alert them that we have baked that in. All right, so chap, uh, section five here.
Right. So I'm not hearing any concerns about section five, which I think we've also been over quite a bit. Um, but here's, I believe, where we want to insert a few words about tiebreakers. So what did we want to say about tiebreakers? Uh, specifically that we need uh, one, that we need a method of tiebreakers because um, you know, we cannot afford to have a special election anytime there's a tie during one of the rounds of voting, since the round victor is not actually indicative of an election winner. Um, and then and also that we recommend using a method that, uh, a tiebreaking method that's based on the number of first rank votes that candidate has gotten in previous rounds, right? Um, so is that pretty much all we want to say about just specify that um, rule about basing it on who was ahead in the previous round in terms of votes. Um, I mean, no, I it's other. basically going to boil down to whatever options available in the software, right? So let me uh, Google that. I think the uh, the different rank choice voting sites have some good language describing. Yeah. I can send that in, and then essentially do a uh, you know uh, accept all changes and send out to everyone a clean document, and you can insert uh, comments on this section. So I'll I'll look up good language for that and um, clean up that section. Is that okay? That sounds great. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that is actually seven. All right, section seven. So this is another just brief one, just really trying to highlight what's needed to be done in terms of getting some things approved. You can kill the last paragraph. Yeah, we can get rid of that. Um, the last sentence in the second section, approval of the special act, that seems like a, a great thing to say, but I wasn't quite sure why it was placed there. Almost felt like it should be the before the before the voting machine. You mean either either before voting machine or after special act at the end of the special act. I don't know which which part are you suggesting moving them? That understanding. So the where it says approval of the special act could be contingent on the elections division being satisfied. Um, I, I didn't understand why it was there. Like if that didn't feel like it was part of the voting machine certification. It's that added sentence at the end of the paragraph with voting machine certification. Oh, 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 I guess that's why I'm not seeing it. It's blue. Oh, yeah. So I just, I, I, I like the idea. I just didn't think okay. that it belonged under no. that section, that subsection. So just move it maybe just to there or something. Well, I think there should go in the special act section. Yeah, that's what, yeah, no? I should put it there. Oh, I, I see right there. Um, you also have to make it active voice, but I'll mark that up. <laughs> Good. For Peggy. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, thank you, that's all. Okay, anything else in section seven? All right, so it is now section eight. I had no comments. I, I think the only thing I would add is that it's it's a several month plan. I mean, they started in the spring for um, the fall elections. And so it's, you know, something that the town, need, our town needs to keep in mind if they want to implement it this fall, next fall. Um, so where did you want to put that? I would say um, for conversion, um, let's see. I, I'd almost, I don't know you could put it after the first um, sentence after the conversion, mm -hmm. but just say, keep in mind that um, the implement, implementation plan is a several month plan and it's not, you know, so it requires um, significant lead time. Another way That's a good place to put it. It will be buried in the middle. Do we want to actually just move it to the summary just to make sure it's really noticeable? Well, it goes in the summary if it's in the body as well. So you could do both. But I, I do think that to me is one of the most important points is that it's a, it's a big plan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So right here. So say your sentence. I forgot it. <laughs> no, Peggy, hit it. <laughs> John. It, it is important this, to note that. It's important this, to note that. This get process on this will passive require. Voice. <laughs> yeah, note that it will require several months preparation and um, the rollout you know, will take several months, maybe is the right way. The planning and rollout will take several months. Like that? I'd say, um, I would just say the planning and rollout will, may require several months. Planning and rollout. Planning and rollout. Yeah, okay. Okay, can we move on to nine? So Jesse, were there some things that you wanted to bring up um, that you had in the email, which I haven't had a, a chance to look at yet, but things you wanted to bring to our attention? Jesse still here? Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, I was I was saying that uh, yeah, I answered, I re-answered some of the uh, comments that were here. Um, I don't know if I just didn't have the most updated uh, copy, but um, 
I had lost some of the changes, I guess. Uh, but the biggest note for everybody is that um, something that Jeff Sylvester said the other day sort of triggered uh, an additional question in me. And through a series of follow-up emails, I found out that um, if you use the ImageCast precinct, you are required to purchase and use the results tally and reporting software. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Um, and, you know, so he had never mentioned that before. Um, I don't know if he thought it was assumed or whatnot, but when I asked him like, mm -hmm. okay, well, what format do you, does the tabulators export the results in? And he says, well, it's a it's proprietary format that only the RTR can read. And I said, okay, well, what if we don't want to use the RTR? And he said, well, then you use the RTR to collate the data and export it into a more open format, like the you know, cast <laughs> records. And I was like, oh, okay. So that means Not we have happening. to buy it. Yep. Um, however, uh, he also uh, asked as a follow-up, uh, since uh, they have now um, negotiated with East Hampton in terms of uh, pricing on stuff uh, for a pricing list, which he provided me, um, it was also, or rather it was, it looked like a copy of a physical letter that had been provided to the town. So I think Susan might have already gotten um, a chance to look at that. Is that the case? No. You mean a recent? Something yeah. Recent? No, not at all. Okay, so uh, this actually is a quote to the town of Amherst. So um, I have forwarded it to Tanya and, and uh, she can yeah, forward that to you. Um, but basically the uh, RCV or the RTR is like, I think 800 bucks a year. Um, I don't know obviously what the town finances are but that seems like a drop in the bucket compared to a lot of stuff. And it's yeah. certainly much cheaper than it would cost to, you know, hire IT to manage and modify the universal tabulator. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's a problem. Yeah. Great. What's, when people refer to the democracy suite, is that another name for what you're talking about? Or that's another like option on top of what you're talking about? The democracy suite is what they use uh, to describe a suite of tools, which includes the RTR. I but see. also includes other stuff. Um, uh, the most recognizable one to this committee would be the software used to design the ballots. Mm. Um, so we're only concerned with RTR uh, unless the town design decides to do all their own design stuff, but they've hired LHS to do that for them in the past. Uh, so I... Um, yeah, so uh, the quote uh, is uh, for 11, I, I don't know why he put 11 because we still do it by precinct. Um, uh, and we actually, we have 11 precincts, right? 10. No, we 10. 10, yeah, that's what I thought. We just have 10. So, 10 plus town hall. <laughs> oh, that's why it's 11, okay. So he quoted for 11 machines and that would be $62,700. And then the RTR bundle, which has a one-time purchase price of $8,000 and then an annual license of $800. So uh, that's that quote. Um, but anyways, in terms of uh, this document, I sent changes to Tanya. We can add them right now, which is just indicating in this section that um, if you're getting ImageCast, you are also getting RTR. And unless there's a really compelling reason that we want to use the universal tabulator or something else, we might as well just go with that. Okay, there's an interest of time unless anybody had questions. Um, I won't make those changes now. I'll just go and refer to Jesse's document and update this accordingly. Sounds good. Okay. Um, and to put a positive spin on that, um, I actually think that having the data that's exported from the tabulators be encrypted in such a way that only the RTR can read it is a beneficial security measure. Okay, so any 
Anything else anyone wanted to point out with this section? I didn't have anything written down and my brain's pretty much mush at this point, so. Yeah, fortunately we're, we're, we're pretty much almost there. It's one one last section of substance in, um, so let's take a look at that. So I updated this um, to be called concluding remarks our sort of final section um, that we're essentially you know, sign, sign off the end of that. And then it's all the different appendices, which um, I don't think we need to take time to go over the appendices during our meeting. Again, send me, if you want any changes to those, send them to me as uh, markups. I have a couple. Oh, go ahead. Um, on as the appendices go, I have a couple changes which I will send to you, but um, I also felt like the order of them was wrong. Um, so I don't know if the other people care about this, but it felt to me like they should somewhat um, mimic the order of the report, just in case someone decides to pick up the appendices and sort of read that. Mm -hmm. they, sure. jump, they jump around. Yeah, well, that's because they just were added ad hoc as, as we... Right, okay, so yeah, so I have an, I have an order. I can send that to you, Tanya. I haven't seen any of the appendix numbering other than appendix one, because I think the special act should be first and foremost. Yeah. But you haven't taken anything else, so I'm happy to change that. Great. And one other um, maybe minor thing is that you've listed our, our names in the committee and um, you didn't list Rob's name, He's not currently on the committee, but should he somehow be included? I yeah. Know. I can ask if, he, if he would like to sign the letter or not. I don't uh, think we could put his name on there without his permission. But I yeah. Fair. You could also uh, put it in a separate category, like prior members or whatever. I don't know. Do I go on there? I know I'm a, it was said the town clerk is, but um, I have no idea if. Um, so you're, yeah. But uh, should we just mark like, I don't even know. I mean, technically you are, but you always vote. So are you even ex officio? How does the charter word it? It's how, I think how we should stick with how the charter words it for when it originally formed the committee. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say town clerk or acting town clerk. What are you officially? Yeah, I'm acting. <laughs> you certainly act like a town clerk. <laughs> I love that title. It's great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. No, thanks for taking that. Okay. All right, so section you can kill the last sentence of the first paragraph now. Another option, um, 
since Rob can't really vote to approve this, we could thank him for his assistance. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, where would that be most natural? Maybe you just add it into the second sentence of the last paragraph. That looks like, oh, yeah. Something like that. Mm. So yep. that they won't understand the context, uh, maybe we should say, and we thank former commission member. Mm -hmm. Rob. His name is actually Carol, but he does go by Rob. Like that? Yeah. Good. Carol spelled right? Double R, double R. Uh, I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. I have some minor copy edits on this section too that I'll send to you. Same here. Tanya, you've put in so much work. This is really wonderful. <laughs> yes, I really thank you again. <laughs> how much time you have and will be putting into this the yeah. next day? Well, I have a, in a, a very large accumulated batch of grading, which I keep putting off. It's like, would I rather grade or edit the report? It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky us. <laughs> yeah. The grading must be really miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I ran my courses as project-based this semester, which is great for the students and really fun when you're doing it. But now I have uh, 10 page project reports to grade. So I'm just like, uh. <laughs> I used to just do what my friends do. They put a different letter on every step going down their stairs and then they toss the papers down and see where they land. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly accurate results, just gonna say. Yeah, and these days of great inflation, you just stamp everything with an A. That's right, you know. Oh, it's... God. <laughs> a, a, done. So I have a, a potentially substantive change to one of the appendices. Okay. Do we have time to just run that by quick? Just a, just a quick note, we do need to do public comment. Oh, okay. Thought we had already. Um, when the description of the um, Wiggum... Let's see, where is it? I will find it in just a sec. It must be in the Wiggum method. Index nine. Yes. Yes. So the basic, starting on page 48, the basic version of Wiggum using four digit precision and batch elimination. Mm -hmm. I just would have found it much easier to follow this if section D, which is the general procedures, came first. Um, because we refer, so for example, in um, mm. after you initialize the election in section A, step three, it relates to D.3, it's entirely unclear what that means um, until you get to part D. So I just thought, to me, it's much more reasonable to put the general procedures first um, and then to start with the initialize the election um, rules governing and so on. Sure. Yep, I think it was just that way because that's the way they had it in the 
the, the Scottish explanation, but yeah, I, I yeah, I figured it was just pulled from there, and maybe there was a reason for that, but I didn't. I found it not very reasonable. I no, that makes sense. I will I will boot that up. That's easy. Great. All right. So um, I will make some of these updates tonight. Send you out a clean copy, and if you could. You know, whichever version of it you want to mark your, your last minute comments on, um, I will figure it out and get them all transferred. Uh, but send them to me by noon at the latest tomorrow. Um, anything else before we move on to just check if there's any public comments? Okay, all right. Do we still, after two and a half hours, do we have any members of the public still with us? How do we tell if somebody wants to make a comment? They would put it in the Q&A. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any further comments? Put them in the Q&A for us. Oh, nope. Yep. <laughs> and Andy's the only one still here. Well, he was the I'm only one ever here, so. <laughs> That's a marathon. That's a marathon to sit through. He's in Florida at the beach, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anything else before we adjourn? This is, this is our last meeting together. I mean, I'm sure we'll see each other again in front of town council or something, but. <laughs> this is our Good point. It's been an honor working with all of you. Yeah, I just wanna say this was a great commission. I really appreciated working with each and every one of you. And um, thank you all. And thank you, Tanya, for all the work you've put in, particularly these last few weeks. Absolutely. I mirror that sentiment. <laughs> Great work. Yeah. Next Everybody. thing you know, they're going to they're going to uh, recommission us to then implement. <laughs> you guys did such good work. Come on back. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Paul will try and sucker some of us back into another committee. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, is that it for today? Yeah, I think I think we're we're pretty pretty exhausted at this point. So All right. I so move to adjourn. To get done. So, so moved. Thanks, All everyone. Right. Ciao. Yeah, everyone, have a great Bye. day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Sue. It all worked. We're good. I know it did work. That's it's good to know. It was very easy to call in too. It wasn't hard at all. Oh, good. Yeah, you just dialed the number, you put in the meeting ID code, and that was it. So, yeah. And thank you so much for all your hard work, really. You did a lot of work. And I mean, you know, <laughs> and good guidance to the group. You were, you were perfect choice for chair, I think. Mm, thank you. You're welcome. And it's You're been welcome. a learning experience. It's been good. It has. It's going to be interesting to see how it moves forward now from this point. It's going to be a learning experience if it does finally pass and we get the special legislation. Um, it's going to be a huge learning experience for our office and for the public. So just I just hope it goes smoothly. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to stop recording because we're done here. Where's that button? All right. There we go. If you can just send me the timeline once you have it, I think.